Hi guys, so I don't do crochet videos very often, but I do have some. Um, I think I have them in a playlist. If not, I'll create a place by the time you see this. Because some of them start off with like the basic crochet stitches. So I can't really start that basic in a video and make a video that's, you know, kind of keeps it moving. <laughs> but I will go through every step, you know, as we go along. That's why I'm making this video. It's kind of a beginner project. Um, I generally don't really have affiliate links for companies or places that sell like yarn and stuff like that. But if I do have for like the other tools, I'll have, those will be in the description box. Those would be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. Um, so for this project, it, it's a mandala yarn project. So basically one skein of this line brand like mandala yarn called Sparkle. Well, I guess any one of them, but I have the Sparkle one will work. Literally any yarn. I mean, you can do this. It's a cowl. Hopefully you saw it at the beginning there. And actually, it's like a uh, uh, little label here. And so it looks like it's doubled over because I don't... This is going to be really long. I doubt it's just made into a loop and then just hanging there. So it looks like it might be doubled or even tripled over. So um, I started this one and I thought, you know what? This is a good project to show you guys. So the pattern itself is a Lion Brand pot pattern. It's the one that sh they're showing here. It tells you there to go to their site for pattern... Uh, da, 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 to create project L70323. I will have it linked in the description box so you can just pop over to that uh, pattern and print it out or however you want to use it. Again, you can do this with any um, yarn, honestly. You just might need a different needle or hook, whatever it is that is, crochet project. Um, so I started mine, but I thought, you know what, as I continue working on this, I can start another one and then finish it here so you can see the whole thing, right, from beginning to end. So obviously I have quite a ways to go, so I'm going to keep working on it so that we can um, finish it up together and you have all in this one video, uh, this easy project. It's just a V-stitch. I mean, you can do this with any stitch. Shell stitch would be really pretty. I mean, I would think even like a bobble or popcorn stitch, that would be so cute. This doesn't have an edging. It's going to just be <laughs> when you're done, we're going to sew the two ends together and that's what makes the cowl, right? You can twist it around. Obviously, it's going to be much longer. Um, but I was thinking like a little pico edge would be cute because even though you don't see it, you might see it, right? It might pop in here and there and just have that little edge. So who knows? Maybe we'll play with that a little bit. But for now, this is what we're doing. So the point of this yarn, it usually looks <laughs> something like this. You can see all the color changes. It started off with kind of a purpley ras and then into a raspberry color into this other color. Now I'm getting into the orange part and you just keep going. So it's going to variegate on its own. Super easy. I'm going to take the hook from this one. So this one I actually used when I made Mir Miranda a shawl, I think. And since she's little, the shawl only had to be so big. And um, so I still have this left. So you would do the whole thing, but since this is from Miranda, I'm like, you know what? It would probably need to be half the size or something. So I'm just going to continue working with this one. I think that'll be really sweet. So we're just going to start off. So for this one, we have the one skein of this stuff. Again, if you have a different uh, thing or different yarn, um, just you know, look on the back and see what hook size you need. This one says it's an H. And the instructions also tell you it's this ball with an H hook. And then you're going to need a blunt needle that's to sew up later, however you want to sew that up. It's up to you. Now, I love in patterns, they always say, like, five V-stitches are about four inches. And it says, be sure to check your gauge. I never check my gauge. And <laughs> honestly, even if I'm making slippers because they're supposed to stretch, so, like, I've never really <laughs> stopped to check my gauge. But especially on something like this, a cowl, it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll fit. It's not a big deal. But let's check. Let's see <laughs> how, f how if I'm spot on here or maybe I'm way off. So five V-stitches is four inches. So... This is literally how you do, if you check your gauge, what you want to do is work up the stitch for like a four inch block and then measure kind of what's going on there. Um, so, I mean, I kind of did this here, right? We're actually, let's measure this just to see. It's about six and a half inches wide and then of course it's going to be super long. Um, but let's see, five V stitches. One, two, three, four, five. So like from here, you would put like a needle, but I'm just going to, ooh, no, mine's too small. One, two, three, four, five. Eh, I don't know if it's too small. I think if I was to, uh, what's the word, like stretch this out and block it, I might be there. But I'm a little bit tight, and I know I am a tight crocheter, but again, I don't worry about it. I'm going to leave this alone. I tried to be loose on this one just because it is a scarf and I wanted to be more airy, but you saw, it's still a little bit tight. I can need to make it a little bit bigger. So check your stitch if you <laughs> like your gauge, but I never really do that. The V-stitch in this one is just going to be a double crochet, a chain one, double crochet, and the same 
stitch that you you know are crocheting into so it's really easy uh, it has some notes there that the cowl is made in one piece work back and forth and then you know you're gonna sew the short ends together there you go um so to begin with to begin with or to begin it and i said to begin with to begin it um, I don't leave too too long here, yeah, but you know, realize I should probably come a little bit closer because it's not that important to be so far away. So to begin, we're going to chain 34. So I have my string. Um, this is just how I do my, you know, however you want. But <laughs> I have my string. I'm going to loop it over. I'm going to pull this from behind. Just grab in the hook there. And pull it through however you want to make a knot you can just make a knot in the air and then put it on you know saying some people just make a tie and then they kind of shove this through there either way and then pull it tight this is a slip knot so i mean it's if i wanted to pull this it's going to move okay and um i don't leave too too much actually this is more than i normally leave but that's just how i do it and then i weave this in as i'm working when i come back down i'll take that in and let it work in or you can also just use that same blunt needle and work it in so we're going to chain 34. So we have this guy on here. This is my H needle super basic hook I have here. Um, I usually have like ergonomic ones, but this is what I found. So how I start, I don't know, however you do it. Um, I'm going to go around here. So I'm bringing it back around. going to catch it to bring through one. That's one chain. Two. Again, back around. Three. Back around. Four. And I'll keep doing this. I'm doing this one a little bit looser. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, I'm gonna keep going <laughs> until I have the um, thirty-four. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, that was number thirty-three and thirty-four. And if you ever get mixed up, what you're gonna do is put your chains. So you can see it looks like little V's, like little chains. On the back side, it has like a, just a little loop across the back, like this little stitch. That's the back side of your chain. Okay, this is the front. So if you ever get mixed up, go to the bottom. <laughs> this is your first one. This little V coming right off the knot. This this little kind of V. That's one, two, three, four, fives, and just count up and make sure you have your thirty-four. Okay. So from here, we're going to do the foundation row, and then after that, we're going to just do row two over and over and over and over until you're done with the, you know, your yarn. Well, not completely done with your yarn. So for this one, we are going to need to leave a length so you can stitch it up. So we'll talk about that when we get there. Also, if you're going to do a picot edge, like I was mentioning, especially maybe I should because mine's a little bit, my scarf is going to be a little thinner than it should have been, right? It should have been a little bit bigger because my gauge is a little bit off. <laughs> um, then I'm going to leave myself some yarn for that. But... If you're a beginner, I, I would say just do the project and don't worry about edging or anything else. But you do want to leave yourself a good amount, maybe two feet of yarn to sew it up at the end, okay? So this is the foundation row, row one. And they want you to V-stitch in fifth chain from hook. And it says the four skip chains count as one base chain and the first double crochet. So um, if you're not super familiar with crochet, usually when you start the row to start building up, this is my end over here. It comes here. This is actually the chain, part of the chain row right here. I brought it up and over and then I started doing my pattern. So this piece right here that you're seeing is part of the foundation row. So you're using that foundation row to help you step up to the next row, right? And the first chain is the one right off the hook. It's this guy. I know it looks kind of weird. It's this one right here. This is the second, this is the third, and this is the fourth. So the first one is not the loop, but it's just the, the chain that's there. I like to go into, whenever I do my chain work at the beginning, I pick up these two and then I work into them, okay? And I'm showing you that because this is the bottom of that, that chain. So this is chain number two, let's say. So there's that little kind of V. I'm going under that, but also under the little bar that crosses in the back, right? The one that I showed you earlier, that little bar. And I pick up two. Some people like to just pick up the one, just this one chain. Some patterns will tell you purposefully, pick up um, only the back chain if you want like this to be the bottom of your work to look like this kind of double, double, double. It looks nice. It just looks different, okay? So wherever you pick it up at, do the same thing every time so it doesn't look crazy. Whatever you prefer to do if you just want to get the one chain, get both of them like I do, pick up just the back one, however you want to do it, but do it the same every time, okay? So... 
V-stitch and fifth chain from hook. Four skip chain count as one base and first double crochet. So I'm going to look for the fifth chain. So one, two, three, four, five. Since this counts as the first double crochet, remember the V-stitch is double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Um, this counts as the first double crochet. This counts as the chain one. So one, two, three, double crochet. And whenever I, a lot of times people count three chains as a double crochet when you're stepping up or doing these kind of things. And then that last one counts as the um, first chain. So now what I have to do to finish that V-stitch, which it doesn't really tell you there, <laughs> is to go ahead and do a double crochet in there. So one, two, three, four, five. In this one, I'm going to do a double crochet. And that completes that first V-stitch. Because again, those skipped four pieces count as the first double crochet plus a chain one. Now I did my second double crochet to finish that V-stitch. And from here it says skip next two chains, V-stitch and next, all across. So I'm going to get ready for my double crochet. I will show you what that double crochet looks like again. You wrap around. You're going to skip two, one, two. And that means you're going to go into the third one. Okay, so don't say skip two means go into the second one. You skip two and you're going to work in this one. So again, a double crochet I wrapped around. Skip two. I'm going to go again, pick up those back two because that's what I like to do. Pull a loop through. See, I wrapped it around the hook. Pull it through. Wrap around the hook. Bring it through the two. Wrap around the hook. And bring it through the last two. That's a double crochet. That's how I do them. If you do them differently, some people do them differently. You know, that's how I do it. Um, we're going to chain one. So just wrap and pull through. You're not doing anything special. And we're going to do another double crochet. So again, wrap over in that same stitch. So in that same place that you made that double crochet, we're going to do another one. Push in there. Wrap. This one always, it's just so intuitive when you go to wrap, because you don't have to actually like wrap it. When you push it through, your hand's already there. The yarn's pretty much there for you to pull it through. Now wrap around. So it's going behind and over, basically. Pull through two. Wrap around. Pull through two. That's our second V-stitch. The first one looks a little bit wonky because it started off as a, you know, step up. So now again, we're not chaining, we're not doing anything. You're just going to get ready for your next double crochet. So I yarned over. I'm going to skip two in that third one. I'm going to, again, insert my hook, pull my loop through, through two, pull my loop through two. Chain one, yarn over, Go in there, pick it up, and finish your second double crochet in that same spot. That's the third V-stitch made. Again, nothing special. Just get ready for the next double. One, two. It goes right here. Double crochet. Chain one. Double crochet in that same spot. And it might start looking wonky if you're new as you're going to work because this gets stretched out and this next one doesn't look the same or like these guys look tighter. Just, you know, follow your gut. Here's that line from the bottom of this chain so the next one's here. You know, don't start getting confused and thinking it needs to be this guy or no, that's the second chain right here or the first, you know, the next one. So one, two, into the third one here, V-stitch. Okay, so I'm going to V-stitch all the way across. I will come back, chain one. Second double crochet, completing that V-stitch. So I'm going to go all the way across until I get to the last, uh, let's see, what does it say? Chain to the double crochet in the last chain, you will have, yeah, to the last two. So when I come back, I'll have two chains left, and then we'll pick up there, like, how to finish that row. I'm just finishing this last V-stitch, my double crochet. I chained one, and now my second double crochet in that same stitch. And if you counted correctly, or if you did the right amount, you should have two chains left. Now, if you don't, don't worry about it, especially if it's at the end. Let's say you only have one chain left, it looks like this, you know, <laughs> and you're supposed to have two. Just make sure, you know, you, you didn't add too many, or you're not missing too many. I would just go ahead and finish up there. I wouldn't even freak out that you only have one left. I would just go ahead and finish up the pattern there. It's not going to make a difference, and especially that's going to be in the... Um, in the seam when we've stitched this thing together so don't worry that's what i'm saying this is a very good beginner's project i think if you're starting out or know a little bit about crochet i think this is a fun one so again it says to repeat everything to the last two chains which is these two one two i have two left so skip next chain and double crochet in last chain so i'm going to skip just that one and i'm going to double crochet here now i told you guys i like to um, pick this string up so usually you yarn over right which i'm going to but i'm going to take both of these pieces 
and I'm going to yarn over. Now that's just what I like to do. You don't have to do that. That way it just buries this guy at the end. So now again, yarn over, draw through those two loops, just finishing your double crochet. Nothing different other than I'm just holding on to that last little loop too. Okay, again, if you didn't have the two to do this with, don't worry about it. Just do it in that last chain if you have one chain left. Um, so it kind of made a big opening there. All right, that's your uh, row one. Super easy. Looks a little bit wonky. It'll start uh, straightening out. Don't worry. So for row two, this is what you're going to do for the rest of this thing. All right, so row two is very easy. We're going to chain three. I can take that little piece or I can just leave it there, but I'll go ahead and take it if I can get it on my hook. That last little bit. Chain three. So all you're doing is pulling through. That's a chain. One. I might leave that bit now. Two. Three. Okay, we chain three. This is still, you know, where we were working. We just came across this way. We're going to turn it now. And some patterns are picky about that. They tell you chain three, turn. Some say turn it and then do the chain three. Whatever the pattern says, do it. So it says chain three. Now turn. V-stitch in each chain one space across. So... We didn't do anything here. This is a chain one space in that V-stitch that we just made. Here's another V-stitch. There's that chain one space. Here's another V-stitch. Chain one space. Not this part that looks like an upside, you know, like a legit a triangle. It's the upside down ones where we actually made a V-stitch, not the two chains that we skipped down here. We're not looking at that. In these little spaces that we created with the chain one. Okay, so loop, you know, yarn over. Double crochet. We're going to do a V-stitch. V-stitch is double crochet chain one double crochet and again we're not chaining one or anything in between the V stitches so now we're gonna get ready for the next one it just becomes so much easier after you do your foundation row this is the next chain one space there's that V stitch so just in there double crochet chain one double crochet and again I'm I don't know if you can see I'm doing it pretty loosely that's why I'm like hmm I don't know, people. If you are a tight crocheter, you can step up your your needle size, maybe get the next one, or maybe they get the next next one. <laughs> it just depends on how tight you crochet. I used to always crochet super tight, and then especially when I started making mochila YU type bags, they want you to be really tight, right, when you're making your um, crochet, stitches, ugh, crochet stitches. So I'm just used to that, but I try purposely to be more loose in this. Look, I mean, that's a big loop. <laughs> it could be like this. Right, that tight, but I'm leaving it kind of loose, so it just kind of is free-flowing in there. Okay, so V-stitch across. Super easy. So where's our v next V-stitch? It's right here. There's that chain one space. Skip that. Chain one space. Don't do that. Chain one space. Like, don't go in here. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, unless your pattern says that, but this pattern is not about that. So we're going into the just the chain one spaces. So double crochet, chain one. Double crochet. And as you can see, the V-stitches are just going to build on top of each other. They're just going to go up, up, up. Just like on this one. Right? V-stitch, 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 V-stitch. They just keep going up. So I'm going to go to the end of the row, and I'll be back when I'm at the end of the row. And, you know, we'll count the V-stitches, and I'll tell you how many there should be, because I don't think the pattern really says that. It's good info to know, just in case if you're a new person to crochet. A lot of times... At the end, like I said, maybe you skipped a couple, maybe you did something else, and now you only have eight when you're supposed to have nine V-stitches or something. But again, this is a very forgiving pattern. As long as you keep going up, you'll be fine. Um, okay, so I will keep working, and I'll come back when we're like over okay. here. So the pattern says V-stitch across, and then one double crochet in the top of chain three. So here we are. We have this guy. We're going to go ahead and finish that V-stitch. So double crochet chain one double crochet now um, so I finished that v-stitch now this is the one where we started and we turned it you know so this is the very beginning like chain four remember we skipped four and we went to the fifth one so that's why it looks wonky it's just the chain and they're telling you to double crochet in top of ch beginning chain now if you guys remember we we're supposed to have three that counts as a double crochet and then one space so I'm not going to go into this. This is the top of our double crochet. It looks like this. I don't know if you ever really looked at the anatomy of a <laughs> stitch. This is the top of double crochet. It's just like a big hole right here. Like, see, it's here too. Um, that's the top of the double crochet. Then there's a chain one. So for this one, we're supposed to have that. We're supposed to have a chain one, and then we're supposed to have a double crochet, that chain three. So I'm going to get ready to do my double crochet. I'm not going to put it in this one, although you can. It's easy. Just go in there and keep going, right? Um... 
but I like to be kind of picky with my crochet, so try to make it look as nice as I can. I'm going to go into the actual top of the chain three. Now, as you can see, it's twisting, and you're seeing the back of that one chain, the back of this one. If we really kind of turn it, there's the top of that first chain. This is the one we want to go into right here. So not this first one, but this one. And sometimes it gets tricky, so what I like to do is I'll poke into the back. That's that back little cross, and I'm going to pull my hook through this way so I can then catch the top two. So I'm not trying to get into the top two, I'm actually trying to get in that back piece to get the top two on here. That's just me, whatever you want to do that's easiest, pull your chain, your, your loop through and then finish your double crochet. So you're just putting a double crochet on the top there. Okay? It's going to look wonky, I'm not going to be worried about that because that's always the beginning, it looks wonky. That is the complete row two. Now it says repeat row two until almost all the yarn has been used and fasten off. And I don't know why it says to fasten off because you're going to need <laughs> this end to help you sew it up. If you fasten it off, that means you're just going to have to get another piece of yarn to sew it up the side, uh, sew it up on this edge. But whatever. So, and now we're back again doing row two. So we've already been on foundation row, row one, row two. We're going to keep repeating row two. So row two, remember, it says to chain three, one, two three, then turn, then start doing your v-stitches inside the chain one spaces, so double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now I'll probably be back in a few days, or maybe later today, I don't know how quick I can get the other one done, it'll probably be a couple days. Chain one, actually double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and all the v-stitches just like we did before. So in every area where you have a chain one space in the v-stitch right here right here right here keep going now I said that we were gonna count how many v-stitches we have didn't I so this is the beginning so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and then the beginning or the end right so we have one little stick one little post a double crochet and nine actual v-stitches I just made that up which was funny when I said if you have eight instead of nine <laughs> I didn't I hadn't counted these so there's that alright so keep going so I'll come back when I get to the end just to remind you and you're just going to keep doing this until it's built up and pretty much all your yarn is gone but you, like I said, you want to leave yourself like a foot or two to help you sew. I am curious to see if this is any wider than what I was working on before but it'll be hard to tell until I do a few more rows. So double crochet, oopsie. Sometimes you split your yarn, there you go. Chain one, double crochet. So I'm going to keep doing that, and I'll come back at the end of the row, but like I said, I don't think this is... Well, maybe it's a little bit wider, huh? Look, well, we're over here. It's a little bit. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'm on right track this time around. Because <laughs> I just needed like about half an inch. I was about half an inch too tight. So that looks about right. Okay, so again, I'll finish up this row. Actually, we'll just do it together. It's so easy. And you don't have to be fast. What happens is you start getting the groove of it. Like, I don't, usually when I crochet, I'm not even looking at what I'm doing. I'm watching TV. I'm doing other things. Um, <laughs> watching YouTube. and Because you start feeling it. Like, you know where you're going. It's just, you get in the groove. And honestly, you'll know if you didn't actually catch your yarn. It's always, like, right there. So it's ready to go. It's so easy. So this is the last one. Oopsie. There we go. Hold on. And see, I'm, sometimes like that one, I pulled it, and I wasn't sure if I actually made my single crochet, my uh, chain one, so I'll just undo it. Again, your double crochet looks like this, has that big loop, this is the top of it where it ends. So chain one, double crochet. Now, we're not talking about foundation rows anymore because we already got rid of that, that three or four that we turned up. So now when it tells you to double crochet at the top of the chain three, it's this one. It's the very first one. So this is our double crochet. Remember, double crochet looks funky. It has this kind of big opening. I'm going into this guy right here. Now this time it looks pretty loose, so I can just dig in there again. Just trying to catch those two. But this is kind of why I told you guys I like to catch the one in the back. It just depends <laughs> on what it looks like, right? Like right now it looks like I can catch these two. So I'm always catching the two. I just depends. Do I want to dig in through the back to catch them or just like this? So now finish my double crochet. So that is slightly different from when you're working into that initial chain that you have to find the four and whatever else. So here's our little guy working up. 
So it's a little big right there. I don't like that. <laughs> That's all right. It'll be gone. Um, okay. So again, what do we got? Chain three. One, two, three. And turn our work. And V-stitch into the chain one spaces. Double crochet, chain one. Double crochet. So I think, I hope you're seeing the pattern. All you're going to do is continue to do this till you get to the last one. Do a double crochet in the top of that last chain or chain three that you just previously did right here chain three turn keep going chain three you know double crochet on the top chain three turn, keep going and you're just gonna keep going all right so i'll be back when the other one's basically ready to finish off and hopefully um you guys can make your your cowl scarf okay guys it is a couple days later only because you know i get to work on this a little bit at a time and um and my project here and I'm pretty much done I, I didn't use the whole thing and I'll show you the whole skein because um, it turns to purple again and all of this yarn does variegate from color to color Oops. it already had the same shade of purple and I know you can say oh well maybe it goes more like a wine into that kind of purpley color into this like raspberry color before it goes on but I mean really they are very close together these two colors I don't think they're gonna be variegated in just slightly away like these guys like these is harder to tell where it changes but you can kind of see where it goes from like this weird kind of green to like a blue it's a little bit different here and a little bit more kind of aqua here before it turns kind of minty and then you know just it's very subtle in some areas but this is basically the same color so i don't want to do a whole other chunk of this purple because it's going to be that big huge chunk of purple when everything else is like a strip that's about four inches or so so I'm going to do one last row, just so we can reiterate what we were doing. And I'm also going to just go ahead and edit this video. I know it's early in the morning, I haven't gotten ready, and I would like to get ready and have a picture of me wearing this, or someone wearing this, so that you can see what it looks like. But you have an idea, you saw, obviously, this gal wearing it. It's very much like this, as I was using, when I'm making it, and I thought, I think you double it over, you must, because obviously it's so long. And, I mean, if you just wanted this to be a scarf, you can definitely do that. Just leave it the way it is and then put some maybe tassels or just some cute little fringe or something on the end or end <laughs> on the end or like a little pico or something to make it different. But, um, so it would make a nice scarf too, but it'd be very light as a scarf. So I think I like the, 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 um, cowl. So, okay, this is my last one. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to sew it up, okay? So, um, remember we do one, two, three, turn. And then um, double crochet, chain one, double crochet in that same V stitch, the chain one space of the V stitch before. Again, we're not going in here, we're going in here. So double crochet. I would say this took me maybe four hours of just sitting down and working, although, you know, I start and I stop, I start and I stop. But I don't even know if it took that long, to be honest. Um, I finished most of it in the last session, and that was pretty quick. Two, one, two, and so I'm just going to sew it up however you want. There's lots of ways to sew it. You know, the thing said fasten off and then to sew it. I'm not going to fasten off. I don't see the point of doing that. But if you wanted to, because you want to use a different color to sew it up, then do that. And that's why I also told you you need a blunt needle so that you can sew. Actually, I don't even know where I put the... Actually, I do know. I see it. It's like, I don't know where I put the pattern. It's off to the side here. It just says, so short ends of piece together to make the cowl. But it doesn't tell you how, and it just says weave in ends, meaning the loose ends, and you're done. But it does say to fasten off after your last row, or like when you're done with your uh, roll. So I'll just use that. Maybe I'll keep it. I don't know if it's worth keeping, but make a pom-pom out of it or something. <laughs> um, and then I told you maybe I'll do an edging on this, because it's kind of plain. But I'll show you what an edging might look like. I don't think I'm going to do it for this one because the way the colors change on this, I was thinking, okay, a black edging. But then I thought, well, that might be weird. Or like a soft white edging. So I did bring this color. This is not something I would use the <laughs> socks. Um, it's the same. It's wool and nylon. So, you know, what's the big deal? But this costs um, more than just like buying another yarn. Just like another acrylic that you can just edge with. But it does a nice color. So I grabbed that. And it's not quite the same weight. I would grab a yarn that's the same weight, so that way it works up the same, you know what I'm saying, with the same 
uh, crochet hook and all that but I just want to give you an idea of what that might look like if you want to add an edging so let's do our last one double crochet again we're trying to get those two because that's how I do it to catch the top two and sometimes it's a little tricky there it is and finish it off now this is where it tells you to fasten off and fasten off would be just to cut it and pull it through your loop and you're done which I can still do but um, what I want to do is see if I can just go for it <laughs> so now this one's gonna be harder to tell what's the front side and what's the right side and wrong side because it looks pretty good on both sides but I think for me when I began it it started this way I started with this on the edge and I went this way and then I went back that way so I feel like this is the front side so front side to front to um, front side because we're going to sew it so I'm just going to turn this so what's the front to the front what we just finished off when we turn it this is the right side I'm going to sew these together now like I said I want to see if I can do this without detaching this <laughs> so basically all I want to do is catch this so this is our first step up or chain three or whatever it was and this is the end one it's over here somewhere I would say it's here she's hiding on me she's in here somewhere what is going on I think I just kept it too tight yeah that's this one <laughs> there's that v-stitch and there's that last one so what I'm gonna try to do is just sew this up now when I sew things I like to do like single crochet but if you wanted to just fasten that off put it on a needle and then you can just you know pick up a stitch on this guy pick up a stitch on that guy pick up a stitch on this guy pick up and what I mean by that is like go in the same loop or try to they're gonna look different because this is the beginning chain and this is the last one but they should you know you should be able to pick up something that you like but what I do for this and since it's gonna be hidden anyway it's gonna be a little bulkier not gonna lie I'm going to um, you can chain one to step up if you'd like first but since this is gonna be a seam I don't really care I'm gonna go through again what's left of this like chain three here I want to see maybe it's this one again this is just pure laziness the way I'm doing it that's why it's a little tricky I'm gonna catch the top of that chain three or at least one of the stitches on the top of that oh, that one come on buddy sometimes they split so they're hard to catch and I'm gonna go back to this guy and I'm gonna catch either that back of that chain or, or both of them however it is but you're gonna do it the same every time the reason I'm only catching one here is because that was um, our beginning and our beginning only has that one little ridge remember it has that one little ridge that we left from the beginning chain this bottom ridge so I'm only catching that one it doesn't have to be that precise either and on the back one you can also just catch the one you know let's do that just to make it look neater okay let's just catch the one in the back and what I mean by that is this one does have that perfect V V V but I'm only catching the one in the back and I'm gonna do a single crochet now I didn't step up because like I said I don't care enough to do that but you can step up by one chain and now we're just gonna try to keep it matched up if you want to pin it and be like be that girl go ahead I don't I'm just gonna hold it and eyeball the next one the next one the next one you know so I'm trying to find where that it's a little bit tricky because it's that beginning chain and everything's wonky here so let's just say I grab like this one just try to make it even I know some uh, I'm going to catch this one ah I'm going to this next one what I consider the next one like I said on this one it's just whatever you think is right and then catch the one on the other guy which is much easier to see of course because we just finished that row and it looks nice and neat so I'm just gonna go across and single crochet so pull through this was one of the V stitch bottoms you can catch that one pretty easy pull through that guy pull up your loop single crochet and that's how I'm gonna sew this up so I'm gonna go across go probably gonna sit on my couch put this on my lap so I can see it better <laughs> and just keep going across as evenly as I can yeah. 
we're doing good so far okay so again just find an area on this one because it's kind of a mess if you can see that back loop great if you don't just pick an area and then find on the other side and just keep going okay guys okay, so i'm at the very end and i kind of turned so i could see it better but um there's that last one and we're gonna cut this off so I had started stitching and I noticed, oh, I had a twist in here. So just make sure you're doing right side to right side perfectly flat, right? So I had to undo a couple of those stitches. Um, and now I'm going to fasten off. And what I like about and fasten off, um, I just pull it back through this empty, my little loop there, pull it tight. What I like about this stitch is that when you turn it around, it creates like a like a little seam that looks like this. Now this is different than obviously the V stitch because it's a V stitch. So what are you gonna do? But um, it makes a nice little little seam. I think it's cute and it has little ridges there. But you know, hopefully that'll just kind of be buried in there and you're not gonna see it too much. Now, um, oh, you know what? I will get a blunt needle. I actually left them in a kit over here. I'll be right back. Any kind of crochet or knitter, you know, you have tons of these kits. I have like. <laughs> multiples of everything but this is one that I always just keep around because it has like the little extra bits that I use here and there but not always and so we have these big needles again I'll link whatever um, tools if I can in the description box there and so now you can just take that and um, hide it basically you want to weave that back in. So a lot of times I'll go back through the same knot I came out and you can go in and out through like the same areas you were. If you want it to be a little tighter what you can do is crawl back up into like one of the posts. I'm trying to keep this in view here. I just came out of there. Let's say like I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna go in the knot of it though and then maybe I'll go into this actual double crochet that's here and then back up in here and maybe into these uh, triple or the um, v-stitch itself where a few knots are there and then some people will actually take a little stitch and I'm on the back side you guys remember where we just did this and maybe we'll actually make like a knot a little tie that's not actually a knot knot it's just more a little tie and then maybe go back through the same way you came you just want to weave it in and out so that if it comes apart it's not going to completely just come apart because this knotted in there maybe I'll knot it here this is all on the back side so it's not showing too too much and some people do this more neatly than myself. I do not care. <laughs> like this is the part where I'm like, oh, I just want to get the project done, and I don't really pay attention to this. But, but it is important because obviously you don't want this to fall apart. So, let's say I just go right back this way, and just leave yourself like six inches a foot. And I kind of do this, and then I give it a squeeze or a little tuck tuck because it'll pull back into the project. And that's that. Now. When you turn it inside out, I gotta cut this little guy off from before. Now we turn around, we have our scarf that is one piece. Again, it's a cowl. So you have this big <laughs> circular thing. All you're gonna do is when you put it on, put it on, and then wrap it back over your head, right? So something like that. However you wanna wear it. So then it looks all fun and nice around your neck and you just settle it in however it is that you want to wear it right because your neck's in here and this is kind of coming down right here of course for me I'll probably have like these berry colors more in the front because I like those <laughs> whatever it is that you want but this kind of I was saying it's kind of you know it's cute it's just there but let's say you want to add an edge and adding an edging I think will make it pop even more because it's something different so let me see if I can find the center of this I'm never really great at these what you should do is dig into the center and find the middle but a lot of times what ends up happening is I pull out the whole chunk and then I look for the very center again looking for that piece if a lot of companies nowadays will make it so that it's sticking out don't pull it out of the outside because then your ball of yarn is going to be raveling raveling it's going to be moving the whole time unless you put in one of those organizers but even at that it's just not fun so I always keep it that way and definitely find the center <laughs> of your um, yarn so I'm gonna keep looking it's in here it's got to be because that's how it is but gotta find that little <laughs> there he is I was gonna pause for you guys but we found him if you want to start giving you trouble already at the beginning I would say try to pull it a different direction just in case because he's already acting like well, if you keep pulling it's gonna be a disaster all right here we go so I'm just trying to show you is if you want to make like a little picot edge, you're just going to take 
your yarn and from the right side whatever the right side is let me find my I guess we can start and end in the same place that way we know what's up so this is the right side because this is the seam in the back okay I would take that again same weight yarn same uh, hook and what I normally do is whenever I have a double crochet on the end these are the ends of the double crochets. I pretend that's three. So if it's a one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we can do a foundation row. Sorry, you know, I just reset the camera it. and I'm not sure where I was, but what I want to talk to you guys about is doing a foundation row, I think, before we go into the picots so it looks nice and you have exactly what you need. And when you come around to do the work, it's not going to look like, oh, I just added a picot. That's kind of weird. So what you would do, and I don't know how I'm going to show this to you guys. I guess I'll do a sample, a little bit of it, and then we'll go from there. Um, is I'm just going to add my my uh, yarn. So um, I'm going to yeah, put through just in this area. You can put it through one of the holes, but it's better. I'm just going to ignore this. And whenever I have, I don't know if I already said this because I totally changed my mind what I was going to do. Um, these double crochet ends, right? How we worked it up. These are double crochet or chain threes. Is I just pretend that that counts as three in my mind. So um, I'm going to put three single crochet in this. So um, let's go ahead and pull up our yarn. So I'm just going to hook that, leaving a little tail for sewing it in. And I would do this on both edges. So I'll do this on this edge, and then I would do it all around this bottom edge just so it looks nice. But if you want to do just on one edge, however you want to work it. So we have this little loop. So to finish off that loop and to hold it on, we're going to yarn over and pull it through. So now we've just added our cream colored yarn with a slip stitch. And now we're going to do single crochets. So I realized when I did the single crochets on the sewing up, it's a different way of doing it. So I didn't really talk about it. I showed it, but not super well. So single crochets are just this. I'm holding my yarn. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to sew it in as we go. So we're going to dig into our area. Usually it's your, you know, into a stitch or whatever, but right now it's just here. So we already have that guy just holding on. So I'm going to go in, pull up a loop. Now you have two loops. This is considered one because it was part of that beginning one remember so yarn over again put the yarn over and pull through that's a single crochet one pull up yarn over pull through the two loops and three so in each one of these guys I'm gonna put three single crochet yarn over and pull it through so now I have three single crochet in here of course we can move them out a little bit very weird because I'm using like I said a different kind of yarn you want to use the same yarn same weight and now in this next space, I'm going to put three single crochets. So pull up my loop, yarn over, and pull through the two loops. One, two, three. Now, admittedly, I'm on the right side of my crochet right now. So when we're done, we're going to come back through. We're going to step up and then keep going um, because it's a circle now. If it was a straight line and you wanted the pico, the right side to be facing, you would have to start your foundation edge on the back side and then come back up the other way but since this is a circle when I come back around I'm still gonna be in the same area but it's hard for me to show you this since I'm not going to actually do this one <laughs> so I'm probably gonna have to cut this thread the yarn and then show you what a pico looks like but three let's just do a couple more one now of course I'm doing this I'm like maybe I should pico the whole thing <laughs> I just don't have time and I want to get you guys this video so you can um, get going you know I have to edit the video I mean it looks cute just like that with even that little three 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 all around but let's pretend we came back around so we keep going we come back around and when you get back to over here you're gonna have the loop and all you're gonna do is you're gonna have your loop here because you just finished you have another set of three here all you're gonna do is pop into your first um, single crochet the top yarn over pull that loop through and then pull it through the loop you already had on your thing so what you're doing is slip stitching it together now you're gonna have a ring right it goes back around that's how you join it but since I just want to show you the idea of pico I'm just gonna turn this and work on this back side because it's the same thing just um, going the other direction so after you slip stitch it if you pull it in there pull up a loop and pull it through the loop you already have now it's together it's all one ring you're gonna you can step up by chaining one right you could chain one and then start with your pico or chain three and just go into the pico it doesn't matter hope that's not confusing again you don't have to do this at all this is just something extra so maybe it's something you want to try next time if you're a new crocheter it's the easiest pico edge i love this so always do um, a multiple of three on your little pico edge 
and you'll you'll be good. Let me finish this up because I think I hear footsteps anyway, so people are waking up, and that's one of the reasons why I gotta just get the video going. So let's pretend this is the um, the chain one step up that we just did after we slip stitched. We have this little guy. So now we're gonna do three, one, two, three. Again, if you're joining and you're just gonna keep going, then maybe you just do th the three chains and don't worry about it. Okay, chain three. We are going to single crochet into the first chain. So this is kind of weird, but <laughs> it's that's what makes the pico. So I'm going to, you know, my little chain is like V, V, V. I'm just gonna grab this one. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna pull up a loop and do a single crochet. So you're doing a single crochet like in the air. <laughs> okay, it's kind of weird, right? You're gonna skip your next stitch, which we were basically coming off of this one. We're gonna skip that one and we're gonna go into the third stitch. And you can see single crochet, just like the double crochet has the little top, that little head. We're going to this one. And then pull up your loop, single crochet. Okay? Now, we're just gonna keep going. Now, um, some people do their picots kind of different because like for me, I want to go in here <laughs> and pull up my loops. One, two, three. That's up to you if you want to slit stitch in there and then do your picot edges. Again, the single crochet in the third chain. Skip that one, go into this one. That stretches it out. Do you want to do every two instead of every three? Because it's like you're coming off of the one. There's just lots of different ways to do this. So I just wanted to give you guys an idea. So let's say we're here. I just finished a single crochet. And since supposedly we were coming out of, we were working on this one, we're going to skip it and go into this next one. You can go right in here. It'll make a tighter pico. So single crochet here. And now we're not actually single crocheting into there, but we're just going to go one, two, three single crochet into the chain three right we're gonna do our single crochet in the air <laughs> you're skipping that one and you're gonna go into this one so it's um, instead of the groups of three you're doing groups of two because you're only skipping one and then the other and then you just keep going so hopefully you can kind of see what that means it leaves like a little frilly edge like this <laughs> okay all along the whole thing so just another idea but like I said I'm just gonna do mine like this for now and I'm happy with that all right, guys, hopefully that last part didn't confuse anybody, but you can always add different edgings. You can look up on all kinds of internet pages or magazines that always have like some kind of edging that you can do. Just add on whatever it is that you need in your foundation row to make the edging work, right? Or go right into it, but usually going right into it makes it look a little bit messy. You do want to do like a foundation row of just single crochets or something like that to get it going. Um, or just like a shell stitch border is really sweet. Oh gosh, there's so many borders. But anyway, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll have some images. I'll probably update the thumbnail later once I get ready and <laughs> dressed for the day and I can take a little picture with me wearing this if you would like. But for right now, it's just going to be images of the cowl itself. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye now.